Hi there, and welcome to episode 322 of Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from if you're watching us live. And hello to my replay watchers. Today is Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. I hope you guys are having a great week. Tonight, I've got two projects for you that are featuring the a latte, latte love, a little latte, <laughs> a little latte sweet. I've got a, an easy fun fold card for you. And then a really cute treat holder. So, so easy. This only uses a four by four piece of designer series paper. So that's what we're doing tonight. I am leaving at oh dark 30 tomorrow morning for Houston for Stampin' Up's convention. We refer to it as on stage. So I've got an early morning flight. So I'm gonna try to breeze through tonight's projects. If you do have a question for me, put a cue in front of that question. I will stay on at the end of tonight's live stream to answer all of your live questions. Be sure to put a cue in front of that and please do save that for questions but I'll stay on until I answer all of your questions tonight. I'm saving questions for the end so that I can focus on tonight's projects. All right, when you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. All you need to do is use my magic shopping link and that will auto magically add my current host code to your order, as well as ensure that you're shopping with me. Um, that link will magically take you to the Stampin' Up! online store with all the good stuff attached to it. So we had some new online exclusives that dropped on March 5th. A couple of the stamp sets went out of, of stock um, pretty quickly after they launched. I just checked today and the Magnolia stamp set and the Zinnia stamp set have been restocked early ahead of when they estimated they'd be restocked. So if you've been waiting for those, make sure you get that order in as soon as possible. Again, the paperpixie.com slash shop. Let's see. All right, I don't have show and tell from the kids today, but let me do a quick project overview for you. Again, this is a quick, easy, simple treat pouch. I'm referring it to it as a two Werther's treat pouch. And I was looking around for something coffee related and Werther's makes this caramel coffee hard candies. I had not seen these before, but I love how they're packaged. So this little treat pouch actually holds two of those. Um, I'm sure you can fit some other hard candies in there as well and chocolates too. Um, but we're gonna do that project first. And then we have a really easy fun fold card, which is as simple as cutting off a three inch section and then turning it landscape. Um, but just, I love the pieces and parts of the Little Latte Sweet Collection. You will see that the Sweet Collection looks like it's out of stock. That just means that the swirls, the embellishment that comes in the Sweet, those are sold out, but you can order everything else in the Sweet. So in the description of the video, I have a link to the project sheet for our three dimensional project tonight. I will pop up a QR code at some point during tonight's stream so you can take a screenshot as well. But that is linked in the description as well as all the supplies that I'm using tonight. So let me show you um, some of the products we're using tonight. So the Latte Love Bundle comes in the little latte suite. I love this and you don't have to use it for coffee. You could do tea as well. But I love the little coffee slash tea stains. You've got coffee beans, these swirls. For lattes, I love when um, the coffee baristas get very artistic with their lattes. Um, love the sentiments in this as well. And then the dies are so cool because you can die cut some things from the designer series paper. You've got this detailed carafe, two different types of carafes. That's a carafe, like a coffee press carafe. Um, so lots of fun there. I love these little mini um, mugs and you guys know me. I love my circles. So I've got stylish shapes again and reach for the stars. I keep hoping we're gonna get some more circle dies in. I get to see the annual catalog, I believe tomorrow, on stage kicks off tomorrow night and I'm hoping the um, annual catalog, the upcoming one is um, gonna be in my registration bag, but we'll find out. <laughs> and then the designer series paper, it is all kinds of pieces and parts. but I'll just give you a quick, cause I was designing and having all kinds of fun. I almost used this pattern, which I love those little heart swirls from a latte. Love the plaid. You got coffee beans on the back side. 
So I'm just gonna do a quick flip through. I wanted to show you, I've done all of the die cutting ahead of time, but I wanted to show you that I, um, using my scissors, cut out a full mug and then a partial one from the edge. And that's what I was talking about last week. Um, when you use the designer series paper, you absolutely can use the ones that are right along the edge of the paper and add them like so. I love that little look with the coffee rings there. It's just hiding underneath that fun fold flap. Let's see, what else haven't I shown you here? Oh, there's just some chocolate <laughs> with early espresso hiding in there from my scrap pile. This is just to give you an idea here. And again, this pattern is perfect, doesn't need to be for coffee, but I love the front and back designs. You get 12 sheets to each of six double-sided designs. This one also can be die cut from the dies as well. There's that plaid pattern again, which I love. There's the coffee rings, the mugs, that's the back side. So you get so many coffee mugs here that you can cut out like so. So I'm going to just show you really briefly because I already did the die cutting ahead of time, but from the dies, that's going to cut out all of these on this sheet. So again, don't ignore the ones that are on the edges here. Okay. All right, let's jump into our 3D project. There's that sneak peek again. Isn't that cute? Just totally looks like a cup of coffee. And I use pecan pie, which is, uh, is a coordinating color in the sweet, but it looks like a little bit of creamer was added to my coffee. I prefer it black, so does Brian. But um, we used to drink it with creamer, didn't we? Back in the day, a long time ago. <laughs> all right, so all you need for this is a sheet of designer series paper that measures four by four, which means you can, get actually, you can actually get nine of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12. I love that, so. This is a great project um, to have a few, especially if you go to the restaurant, maybe you can leave it with the tip for the waiter or you know, a cashier or your nail technician. I love these little tiny things to have a few of them made up. And then um, you don't have to worry about the Werther's melting. So if this were a directional paper, you'd want to start with the pattern in portrait. This is not directional, but pretend like it is. And we're gonna do the first two score lines along the top of the portrait pattern, if it were portrait. And I'm just gonna go ahead and score at one on each side. So I'll rotate at 180. Okay, so one and one. Then I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn to the, if the pattern were portrait, turn it so it's kind of in landscape. And then we're gonna score this at one and five eighths from each side. So you just have to remember those two measurements. So again, pattern and portrait, one and one. So one and rotate and do one again. Turn it a quarter turn, one and five eighths, one and five eighths. And that's it for the scoring. Like I said, easy peasy. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. Now, if you're not a coffee drinker, this project is so easy to adapt just by changing the sentiment or the papers um, for any occasion. So let me bring in the templates. There's no cutting on this either. Like I said, this is very, very easy. So I've got my one inch sections here on the left and the right, and I'm gonna fold on one. We're gonna start on the right side and we're gonna create these diagonal score lines here. So. I'm gonna go ahead and put my fingernail or your bone folder right where that score line is. This is the score line, the horizontal score line that's closest to me. And I'm going to line up that score line with the folded edge to do a diagonal score line. So let me do that really quick. And I'm actually burnishing with my fingernail, but you could use a bone folder. But that has just created this score line right here without having to do any measuring or scoring with a stylus, okay? So we're gonna just work our way around and just keep doing the same thing, lining up the closest score line to me and folding it to meet up with that edge. Again, use your bone folder, your fingernail to kind of get right there in the corner. So like so, okay? Then I'm gonna turn it 180 and we're gonna do the same thing, score line closest to me, lining it up with the folded edge. Okay. 
and then repeat on the opposite side. When you're making a whole bunch of these, that goes really quickly once you get the hang of it. So you'll see here on this side, we've got those sort of radiating diagonal score lines that now match the template, okay? Now I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive and I'm gonna make a mark here on the template. So when you come back to watch the video, you can reference this. I'm gonna put adhesive in these sort of, what would you call those, trapezoids. I feel like I keep always keep doing algebra on my stream, but trapezoids. So these are the sections closest to the middle but out to the edge, that's where we're gonna put adhesive. You do not have to put adhesive. Essentially, this is gonna to go together like so. I personally like gluing those down. Um, it just gives it a nicer finish. So let me get liquid glue, which I know I had. Yep, <laughs> I got it. Um, so liquid glue, so you're doing the corners, but only up to the diagonal score line. And actually do all four of them and show you closer to the camera and your glue doesn't have to be pretty you just don't want it to be a lot all right so you can see it's only in those four corners up to the diagonal score line and then all I'm gonna do is just fold those one inch sides flat and hold and press we'll let that stick for a minute Then I'm gonna burnish. I'm just kind of smoothing out the glue there. And then we have what looks like a mouth, but that is basically that mechanism, okay? So I love the little peak of the coffee beans on the inside and then that plaid on the outside. So that little pouch now is gonna fit two Werther's. The measurements of this are, it's one and five eighths inch tall two inches wide and three quarters of an inch deep. And so it fits really nicely two Werther's in there. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of pinch in the sides there and pinch in the top. Okay, so it's gonna look like that, but we're gonna go ahead and dress up the front and close this. Now, I wanted to keep this to a four by four so you get a whole bunch from a sheet of 12 by 12, but that didn't leave a lot of room for it to have a built-in closure. So I'm gonna bring in a piece of lemon lolly cardstock and this measures just under one inch by three and a half. Let me double check that measurement. Yes, three and a half, okay. Ooh, Bubba G's in the house. Hi, Gregors. Now on this three and a half inch piece, I'm gonna go ahead and score this right down the middle at one and three quarters. Make sure you remove your cutting blade. So three and a half, we're just gonna um, score that right in half. I don't think I included that measurement on the um, project sheet. I'll likely update that after the stream just to make sure you've got that measurement, but it's just the halfway point. You could also fold it in half as well. I'm also gonna bring in I put it away, but the banners pick a punch and we're gonna use the banner end here. They're both banners, but the one that has the bird's beak end. And the reason why I say to cut it just under one inch is that means it'll fit nicely in that tray. Now I still like to flip it upside down and look on the back, make sure that's centered. You want it to be centered so that peak is gonna be centered. That went right in my trash can. That was so, it bounced off my arm and went right into my little trash can. I probably could never repeat that. <laughs> uh, nope, I missed it. <laughs> that one went on the floor. So there we go, we got our little banner ends. All right, now we're gonna do some stamping here because uh, I didn't show you the back, I don't think, but when I designed this, I, I thought I was done, but I had such a hard time not stamping something. So I decided to add thanks so much to the back. Now you're probably wondering, well, Julie, where did that come from? And it does come from Latte Love, thanks so much. But we're gonna do a little bit of masking so that we can get that stamped right where we want it. So, all right. I'm using Early Espresso ink, and I'm gonna get my Post-it tape 
post-it tape, scotch tape, basically anything that you can use to cover um, what you don't want to ink up. I'm actually going to cover up the word thanks first. I'm just covering that up so that we isolate so much. And then I'm going to ink it up. Blowing your no, no one's blowing his nose, I think. <laughs> and then I'm going to take you. This is really important. You got to take the post-it tape off and put it right in your trash because otherwise you're going to get ink everywhere. <laughs> All right. So, so much. I'm going to do that one first because I want it to be down a little bit. Let's see if that works. There we go. Okay. Then I've got a chamois. This is not a Stampin' Up! chamois, but it just happens to be one that I have ready here. Um, I think it's Gina K, but um, in my little salt cellar. <laughs> All right, so then I'm going to grab another piece of post-it tape, and this time we're going to cover up so much, but then leave thanks. I stamped the so much first because then that way I could control kind of the placements. I know how far up I wanted to be from the bottom. So now we'll ink up thanks. And again, be careful, take your post-it tape off and put it right in the trash. And then we'll stamp thanks just above so much. There we go. So that is one way to look at your stamps a little bit differently by using um, masking. And then that way you can kind of place things, especially with our photopolymer. You can do it with the red rubber as well. Photopolymer just makes it so e much easier to see when you're stamping, okay? All right, let's see. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is fold this in half. I kind of want that um, early espresso ink to dry briefly. I'm gonna burnish. So that is gonna end up folding right over our treat holder. Now, this doesn't matter which side is the front or the back with this pattern, but if you did have a directional pattern, you wanna make sure that you're putting the blank side on the front, the front meaning your pattern's going in the right direction. If you had a directional pattern, the back, the pattern's gonna be upside down. So just a little tip for you. Now for this, I'm just gonna grab a mini stapler. A regular staple will, stapler will work too. It just depends on if you'll be able to fit it. Um, but I love the mini staplers. This one's retired from Stampin' Up, but there's lots of mini staplers on the market. So I'm just making sure those edges are lined up and then I'm gonna come in and staple. And that's gonna close that there. And I love how little banner kind of hangs off the edge like that when it goes over the slope. Cute little detail there, whoops. All right, so I have die cut some things ahead of time. These are both from, well, this is from the Stylus Shapes. The diameter on this one, this is early espresso and it's an inch and a quarter. And then I've got Calypso Coral that is like one and one sixteenth. So we're gonna layer those two together. I'm wearing my St. Patrick's Day shirt today. <laughs> Since the next time I see you, which will be next Wednesday, will, St. Patrick's Day will have passed. All right, so we're just laying those over. I love that pop with the early espresso behind Calypso Coral. All right, there's that. Looking at my sample here. Okay, I did do, well, on the dies, I did this ahead of time, but this one you may be wondering, what the heck is that for? That is for your little coffee piece on the mini mug. So it cuts out two at once. You've got two mugs. Can, you can have your handles going two different ways. So that is pecan pie. The other one is on my sample here. If you have trouble with putting liquid glue on a piece this tiny, uh, you can also put the adhesive sheets on your basic or on your pecan pie before you cut. I got that glue booger there. Let's see. All right, I'm gonna layer that. What I love about these little mugs is they've got a little bit of a die cutting detail. Let me slide that into place first, then I'll show you close on camera. So there's like a little cut underneath and then also on the bottom. Isn't that so cute? 
straighten up my coffee here. There we go. Love that. Tiny little detail there. So I'm gonna grab a dimensional. Behind the coffee mug. We'll pop that on our circle here. And then the trick here is I like to just put the dimensionals right on the little banner piece. So right underneath the stapler and then one stacked right underneath it. Like that. Pull the backings off. And this circle is actually gonna hide the staple, staple on the front, like so. Isn't that cute? Now you'll see the staple on the back, but that doesn't bother me. And then, a little rhinestone basic jewel here. The take your pick tool is, I love for doing this, just picking up with the putty end a rhinestone right on the end there, and then I can place it right where I want it. Boom, like that. Is that not the cutest little thing using just a four by four piece of designer series paper? So super cute. I found these Werther's at my local Walmart, but I'm assuming other places carry them as well. Again, it's the Werther's original, but the caramel coffee. So you'll see the coffee in the corner there, okay? All right, so that's our 3D project. Uh, let me transition to the card here. And if you haven't taken a moment to hit the thumbs up button, we'd appreciate that. And if you're new here and you're not already a subscriber to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe so you'll get notified of my next videos. All right, so there we go. Those are our little cuties. All right, let me grab the pieces and parts for the card. I think I cut everything right. I'm gonna to have to measure my layers because I didn't write them down. Um, but when this project goes to the blog, I have, um, I do plan to post the blog while I'm in Houston. I'm bringing my laptop, but if you don't see a post, you know it's because I'm having way too much fun <laughs> and I can't get away to do a blog post. But I will post the measurements for the card as well as last week's Zinnia card as well, that's due on the blog as well. So I'm hoping to get at least one blog post out this week, if not two, so stay tuned. Now, I've got Calypso Coral for the card base, and this measures four and a quarter by 11, and it's scored in the center on the 11 inch side at five and a half, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and, before I fold and burnish, I'm gonna show you how easy this is. On the long side, I am going to cut off a three inch piece. Boom. That is how easy this fun fold card is. So you've got a three inch by four and a quarter inch piece. And then this piece is eight inches by four and a quarter and scored at five and a half, okay? But it, this really, we just cut it off and then we're gonna turn it landscape, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish. There we go. All right, let's start building. Let's do the inside fun. We'll do that part first. All right, so I've got a four inch by five and a quarter inch piece of basic white. Let's see. I know I had a scrap piece of paper around here. Somewheres. I'll just grab a new one. All right, so just a little scrap piece of grid paper. So pecan pie ink. I'm gonna use that coffee rings stamp set. And we're gonna go ahead, actually, I'm gonna do all of this right here on the grid paper. So second generation stamping here. I'm gonna stamp once onto my grid paper and then once onto my basic white. So see how that really looks like a coffee stain? Like instantly, isn't that cute? And you could do a whole bunch of those on a project, be really cute for a pattern. All right, so to that, from the designer series paper that I showed at the beginning, I die cut a full coffee mug top. And then this one was an edge piece. So I'm actually going to layer that right there on the edge. So a little bit of a peekaboo on the inside of the card. And ironically, the back side of this paper is the coffee rings. <laughs> there we 
go. So I'm just lining that right up to the edge there. So you got plenty of space to write the note to, re to the recipient. And we're gonna go ahead and glue that to the inside of our card. And if you're getting glue lines that show up behind your basic white, just use your bone folder and just spread that glue out. There we go. All right, so let's focus on this. Well, let's do this pattern first. This is the Calypso coral piece that has the coffee beans in white. And this piece measures four by two and a quarter. So we're gonna go ahead and glue that to the front of our flap. I want to give a special shout out to my pixie patrons. You'll recognize them with the little magic wand icon next to their names. We've got our next members only stream is next Thursday, March 21st, episode six. Templates 11 and 12 will be released for that. All right, so there's that. I had a different pattern here when I was working on the sample and it was just way too busy. So I like that same kind of tone on tone. So we've got our three inch by four and a quarter inch piece that we cut off from the card base, okay? We're turning it sideways. Then I've got a piece of basic white to really make the pattern paper pop. And this one measures two and three quarters by four. Gregor's. Gregor's is my hype man. <laughs> All right. And then we've got the plaid paper. This one measures two and a half by three and three quarters. And that's going to go like so. Okay. But I love how that white, just that white layer really makes it pop. No one blowing his nose again. You guys are so sweet. All right. I'm just smoothing that glue out with my bone folder. Now we're gonna go ahead and glue this to the card base. I usually just eyeball this. If you wanted to, you could mark with a pencil, um, but I'm just gonna eyeball because I know that it's less than half. There we go, maybe a little bit more. And then we're just gonna eyeball this again. I'm gonna center it top to bottom, left to right. The white here kind of helps you center that. So you've got basically the same amount of white appearing on three sides there. There we go. Hopefully I didn't put, nope, I didn't put too much glue. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Then you just need your little adhesive eraser if you need it. I did find it, you guys, after, if you watched me last week, it was in the drawer behind me. One of my kiddos put it away there. <laughs> So there we go. I love that little coffee mug there, peeking, or the latte mug, I should say. They don't get quite so fancy with coffees, do they? All right, so this one, I cut a different um, latte mug here, but we're going with this one. The other one was the Lost Lagoon, I think. Yeah, Lost Lagoon is that pretty blue. So you've got lots of options with colors. Make sure my heart is not upside down. 
turn it up just a little bit there. Love that. Okay, and then I have die cut this. This is actually the circle from the Latte Love bundle. And it was this circle here. And this one measures, well, I can actually measure the circle itself. That is an inch and three eighths. Okay, so that's already built in there and it's designed to cut out the centers of the lattes, but it also perfectly fits the sentiment. You're the best part of my day. I love that. So we're gonna stamp that in early espresso. Normally I would stamp this and then die cut it, but I wanna to try to save some time tonight because I'm mostly packed, but I got some things to do. I love that sentiment. But you wouldn't know if I was talking about you or a cup of coffee, would you? <laughs> I could be talking about the coffee that's on the cart. It says, you're the best part of my day. <laughs> All right, so we're going to add a little bit of linen thread here. <laughs> All right, linen thread, I'm going to, because it's all kinked up, I'm just going to put my thumb, so basically the linen threads between the bone folder and my thumb. I'm just kind of smoothing that out a little bit and we get glue dots. Okay, we're gonna do a little loop-de-loop. -loop. That's got too curly of a tail here. Let's tame you. There we go. Let's see. I'm just eyeballing. <laughs> Skizzers. I put them back. Yeah, at home I drink, oh, my scissors need to be um, cleaned up. At home I drink coffee. When Brian goes out of town, I don't know how to make coffee at home with whatever contraption he has. So I'll go to Starbucks and treat myself to a latte usually. I couldn't drink lattes every day, but what am I looking for? The glue dots that are right in front of my face. So I just did a little zigzag. You'll be able to see it better once I get it stuck to the glue dot. But it's just kind of like a that way, that way, that way, like a little snake. And... I'm going to change this one. Nope, I'm going to have a go. I'm like designing in my head right now. <laughs> We're going to go like there. So I'm just sticking that glue dot right to the card. And the sentiment's just going to go right over that. Okay. So what I like to do is just take two dimensionals and I just pop it on either, either side of that smooshed center like that and then we'll pop our sentiment right over top boom and we got our tails kind of I love that little one's going up one's going down adds just a little bit of neutral detail and texture and I used up all my large rhinestones so I had to open up a new pack which was missing one of the rhinestones, <laughs> or at least I haven't found it. And we're just gonna pop that right up there for a little bit of bling on that fun fold. Let me clean up my mess here. All right, so those are the two different versions. That's the one I created ahead of time. That's with that Lost Lagoon mug, a little bit of a different latte design there. And then this one with the Calypso Coral, and you can see the handles in a different spot as well. But really easy, fun fold. Love that little detail on the inside. Looks like I made a mess with my coffee. <laughs> 
So there we go, quick and easy fun fold again. Normal card base, you just cut off three inches from it and turn it landscape and you're done. And you can have fun playing with layers and colors and sentiments and all that fun stuff. So that is tonight's project. So again, we've got the quick and easy two Werther's treat pouch using a four by four piece of designer series paper and then a fun fold, but a really easy fun fold. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tee up for questions tonight and then I will get to packing so I'm ready to go by 5 30 tomorrow morning uh, if you do have a question for me put a cue in front of that question that will make it into my queue um, you I am on a little bit of a delay for you so if your question comes in at the tail end I might miss it you can always email me at support at the so let's see oh you all right I almost forgot again there we go Yvette is up first I forgot to ask last week does the brother scan and cut also cut stamped images for those stamps without dies yes I actually will say that that is the main reason why I purchased the scan and cut was to die cut or I should say cut um, stamped images so um, Especially when I'm making multiples, I can do a whole full sheet of stamped images. It's really fun, especially if you're coloring in with Stampin' Blends. And then you can have the Scan and Cut do all the cutting for you. I will say it doesn't replace the need for dies, because I will always grab dies if I'm just doing one or two or maybe less than five die cuts. It's easier to just bring out the stamp and Cut and Emboss machine to do that. Um, but if I'm doing a whole bunch, I'll use the Scan and Cut to save me some time. Also for those images that don't have dyes, like you said, Yvette. So yes, absolutely, it'll scan. Basically what the Scan and Cut is doing is it's a scanner and then it reads the images and decides kind of where to cut. And you can tell it to add a little bit of a border so you have some white around the image. You can have it cut right up close. You've got lots of options. And the the best piece of advice I have, I have two pieces. One is to check out the Papered Chef because she has a ton of uh, scan and cut tutorials specifically related to Stampin' Up! products. And two is don't click the cut button until you're sure that you're ready for it to cut because um, it does give you an opportunity to look at the images and how they're going to be cut. So make sure you're looking at that. You can actually zoom in. I think it's up to 400% to take a look at where the cut lines are. Um, it's kind of that measure twice, cut once philosophy. So make sure you're just checking that out before you hit the cut button. You can cancel it in the midst of cutting, um, but I always say try to double check before you hit the cut button. Let's see, heartfelt hexagon. I don't know off the top of my head, Sharon. Um, I wanna say it's sometime in April. Either April 6th or April 22nd is in my head. I think there were some folks in the chat letting you know, but you can also shoot me an email and I can check that specific date as well. I did not make swaps to take along to on stage. Um, I uh, what's the phrase? Drop the balls that bounce. <laughs> um, I wanted to make sure that I could, um, I always get so frazzled and stressed out. I, I love doing swaps. Like it's one of my favorite things to give at on stage is just things that I've made. I love it, but I oftentimes leave it to the last minute. So I decided, no, Julie, you're not taking swaps, <laughs> but it's killing me. I've got a couple of like gift things for my team and some other folks that I'm traveling with, but no, I did not make swaps. So, but if I do get any, I'll let you, I'll let you guys know. Let's see, Lemon Lolly Pam, I don't remember the date on when that one's gonna be back in stock. I know I have a customer waiting for the bubble bath and that one was March 25th. So I'm hoping lemon lollies around the same time. Again, somebody might've answered that in the chat, but if you didn't get your answer, Pam, just shoot me an email support at the paperpixie.com and I can check that date for you. Can I purchase 12 by 12 pack of different color paper, pack of brights, one of Regal, et cetera? Yes, Lydia. So um, the 12 by 12 actually only comes in color families. You get, uh, I think it's 20 sheets of 12 by 12. You get two each, two of each color. So it's 20 sheets. Each color family has 10 colors. So yes, you can purchase those. So when you're on the Stampin' Up! in the Stampin' Up! online store, just go up to the search bar where the little magnifying glass is and type in brights 
or regals, and you'll, you should see those 12 by 12 pop up in the search results. Um, so Cindy, the Airtable video, it's a video of mine from two, maybe three years ago, where I shared how I um, organize my Stampin' Up! inventory in Airtable. It's a, um, just a quick synopsis. It is a spreadsheet data spreadsheet database hybrid. I absolutely love Airtable. I use it for a bunch of things for my business. Um, I will say that Airtable's pricing is changing. They do still have a free option, but there are limitations on the number of records you can have. So if you have a massive um, stash, crafty stash, you might go beyond um, what's available on the free one, but feel free to check it out. If you just go to my blog, actually, did you maybe grab the link to my Airtable? You just search for air, air table, all one word. Uh, Brian's going to grab the link, Cindy, for you and pop it in the chat, but you can also go to my blog and search air table and you'll find that blog post, which also is linked to a video. Melinda, that is a great question. Believe it or not, that mini stapler retired f five years ago, maybe. I still haven't used up all the staples I had. So, um... I believe they are regular size minis, but I have like four left. So let me measure. I don't really know how they describe staples, but these are just about three eighths of an inch, a little bit less than three eighths, um, but they're just tiny little things. Um, now, obviously, you can use a regular staple, staple as well, but I love the little mini staplers. You can find those on Amazon. Um, but I think these are three-eighths of an inch, if that's the size of staple. <laughs> but I, I'm pretty sure, if I remember when the mini stapler retired, I feel like it was easy for folks to find the replacement staples, but I could be wrong. I will be looking for a replacement once I go through those last four. <laughs> Uh, let's see. You absolutely could, Yvette. You could use um, the couple of different things you could also do. I don't think I still have the other sample out. I actually um, took a two inch circle punch as well. And with the two inch circle, I scored it in half at one inch and I folded it over the top. And I actually just glued the back half of the circle to the treat holder. And then I did a... Um, half of a Velcro dot on the front. So that's an option. You could absolutely punch a hole and tie some ribbons. You got lots of options to close this. I wanted to show something a little bit different. I've done quite a few boxes of this style, not this tiny, um, but there are a number of different ways that you can close these. Versatility, which I love. Let's see. Could we use a white piece stamped with a coffee swirl and then die cut? Absolutely. So, um, You've got two options on the stamp set for the latte swirls. So you could stamp those in early espresso or pecan pie. Those are the two browns that coordinate. And then you can use the circle die right here and die cut those out. So I love the versatility of this bundle. So Cindy, the next members only stream, the, Pic the Pixie Patrons members only stream is Thursday, March 21st for episode six, so it'll be 8 p.m. Eastern time a week from tomorrow. Okay, I'll remind you all next Wednesday as well. K3 of 5Ks, do the items that do not carry over to the new catalog go on sale or clearance? So, um, demonstrators are gonna get to see the new catalog on March 18th, those, those of us going to OnStage will get to see it tomorrow, I think. Um, on March 18th, they're also gonna release the last chance list to demonstrators, and I believe the last chance sale starts April 5th, I think. I don't, I don't have, those dates are not clear in my head at the moment, but um, there will be discounts. Typically, they're up to 60% off on last chance items. Um, but they're not all going to be discounted. So once the last chance list comes out, you can check those discounts. But yeah, some of them will definitely be discounted. And you'll have basically the month of April is a while supplies last. Um, so anything on the last chance list is while supplies last and won't be restocked. I will give you a heads up right now. I gave a heads up to my customers last week 
the five in colors that are outgoing. If you love any of those, that was like strawberry slush. No, sweet sorbet. Wow, I went way back with strawberry slush. Sweet sorbet and Tahitian Tide, those five colors. I only named two of them, but I'm not gonna be able to think of them all on the fly. Those are retiring and as soon as those pop up on the last chance list, they're gonna sell out first. So I recommend that you grab them now. Those typically aren't discounted, um, but they just because they sell out so quickly. So just a heads up if you wanna get those colors, like if Sweet Sorbet was your favorite, you probably wanna stock up. The other thing that I will recommend to you is if you don't already have the ink refills, get those for those colors because that will make those ink pads last for years, okay? Let's see. Nope, and there's no silly questions, Yvette. How do I use the clear embossing powder if I'm stamping with an ink pad? It's a little bit of a timing thing. You have to be really quick. You want a juicy ink pad, and before that ink dries, you wanna be sprinkling the clear powder. So you've gotta have the clear embossing powder kind of ready to go, um, and have it basically right next to each other so you can, while the ink is still wet, get the clear embossing powder on it and then set it or heat, heat it up. So you just gotta do it quickly. Um, that's my recommendation. Let's see. Do I have any idea when I will pixify the notebook holder that you got as a 3D exchange? I have no idea. <laughs> um, I haven't, um, that one is, I'm just like noodling on it. Um, sometimes pixified projects take me a while until I come up with something that I love and I'm not there yet with that one. So it'll come eventually. I definitely wanna do a notebook holder. Um, but yes, I don't have an idea of when that happens. That kind of what happens with us creatives. I don't have, I don't know when inspiration will strike. <laughs> Let's see, did I ever think to come to Europe to the workshop? You might be asking about either me traveling to Europe to give classes or to attend maybe uh, a Stampin' Up! event in Europe, but no, I have not um, thought about doing that, but that's very sweet of you to ask. Alrighty, we are at the end of the questions. It's time for me to pack for my trip to Houston. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and thanks to those of you who have watched this on replay. We'll be live again next Wednesday, March 20th, 2024 at 8 p.m. Eastern time for episode 323. My next members only live stream is Thursday, March 21st at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's episode six. If you're interested in joining the Pixie patrons, look for the join button right below this video. It's right next to the subscribe button. If you don't see the join button, you're probably on an iOS device on the YouTube app, so make sure you're looking for it on a browser if you're using a, an iOS device, so an iPad or an iPhone. Um, you can always go to thepaperpixie.com slash patron, and that will take you where you need to go as well. I hope you guys have a wonderful and blessed week. Again, um, check out the online exclusives, and I think that's about it. My brain is fried. I'm going to go finish packing. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Here's a shout out to my Pixie patrons. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you guys next time. Take good care. Bye.